Dear learners, greetings from IIT Gavati. We are in this course, Advanced Thermodynamics and Combustion, that is Module 2, Entropy and Exergy. So, in this lecture, we will cover the Entropy Analysis Part 4. And in uh, prior to this class, we have exhaustively discussed about uh, and, uh, second law analysis and its consequence or statement in terms of entropy. This particular lecture will focus mainly on isentropic process, isentropic efficiency and polytropic processes. Just to emphasize the fact that at the UG level, uh, you might be aware of the term isentropic efficiencies which are normally applied for the steady flow devices. These steady flow devices includes compressors, turbines, nozzles, diffusers, pumps and they are the basic components for a steam or gas turbine power systems. Now, with respect to this particular course, although this is a kind of a repetition, but I will further emphasize the fact, uh, just emphasize the fact that entropy analysis plays a vital role and in particular, the term which we are going to discuss today that is isentropic efficiency is the benchmark for all practical devices. So, in fact, this particular lecture is mainly devoted to the applied part of this course. So, let me start first is isentropic process. We have already discussed the term isentropic which means entropy is a constant parameter when the system undergoes a change of state. And this isentropic word is very vital in the thermodynamic analysis of turbo machine components. In fact, it relates the thermodynamic parameters between two states. As you can see in the pressure volume diagram or temperature entropy diagrams, one can draw various thermodynamic processes involving a constant pressure process, constant volume process, constant temperature process or isothermal process or it can be any processes that bears the name polytropic. And in fact, all these processes are quasi static in nature, which means we can uh, use this thermodynamic equations as a reversible, uh, internal reversible process. So, we have uh, to analyze all these thermodynamic parameters for an isentropic process. The ideal choice that we should look uh, is the temperature entropy or enthalpy entropy diagram that is because constant entropy line is represented as a vertical line. Now, uh, when the uh, process is analyzed for estimation of different parameters, we look for the thermodynamic property tables which are available in all, all fundamental thermodynamics books. We also will explore Mollier diagrams which is nothing but the enthalpy entropy diagrams. And in fact, for a ideal gases, we have derived the isentropic relations between two states that is pressure, temperature, uh, volume, specific volume and density. So, this relation is very vital for analysis of isentropic process. Now, let us move back to the uh, importance of this isentropic pro, um, process and when we deal with isentropic efficiency. In fact, all the steady flow devices 
that are used in the power plants they have they undergo certain thermodynamic processes and the analysis of these processes is dealt with one particular parameter that is if the process is internally reversible and for which the analysis can be done through isentropic process so in a, in a sense that the isentropic process is the benchmark for the idealized performance of the component so if i can summarize uh, this fact the steady flow devices includes components like turbines nozzles compressors and pumps these components are modeled by for uh, two situations one is the uh, conservation of energy by using the first law uh, um, of thermodynamics also we use mass balance equations and most importantly it is also under consideration that is entropy which is used for steady state control volume the so basically analysis involve mass and mass mass balance energy balance and entropy balance for a control volume now when you deal with the entropy balance we normally use the time averaged values of the either entropy mass or energy now because of the nature of uh, the different components for example turbine is meant for pr producing work nozzle is meant for enhancing the velocity compressors are used for raising the pressures even in fact pumps are also used to raise in the pressure for liquids so because of this uh, nature of the requirement the terms that is associated in the energy balance one which is uh, heat transfer term through the control volume or the work transfer term for the control volume that can be set to zero or a negligible number as compared to other other parameters so so when the qcv that is heat transfer term can be set to zero because if it is small relative to energy transfers across other energy transfers across the system boundary now work transfer term drops to zero when there is no rotating shaft or physical displacement of boundary so in such cases we can neglect this term in some instances like turbines and uh, uh, um, compressors the kinetic and potential energies are negligible so for all this component analysis if we neglect this term and then we can define a term which is called isentropic efficiency in and uh, which is considered at the idealized performance indicators with respect to actual performance of the component all these components use steady flow equations and the analysis is done through con through a control volume and when i say control volume there is a possibilities of mass transfer as well as the energy transfer so for a control volume at steady state in which the flow is both uh, flow is both isothermal at constant temperature as well as internal reversible appropriate entropy balance equations can be written obviously we also know uh, the work or heat transfer per unit mass um, through a, a one inlet one exit control volume that means energy balance equations can be written so in our last class we derived the relations for the internal reversible process that is entropy change we also dealt with the heat transfer term for an internal reversible process work transfer term and ultimately we end up in having the expressions for heat transfer and work transfer in a control volume analysis 
in a simplified term like heat transfer is nothing but the integral of T d s work transfer through the control volume per unit mass is integral of B d p. Basically, it means that on a T s diagram the when the process undergoes a change of state the area under this curve represents the heat transfer. Similarly, in a PV diagram for an internal reversible process when the system undergoes a change of state and this area represents the term B D P. So, this is the practical significance of work transfer term and heat transfer term for internal reversible processes. In fact, these two equations will be heavily used in the analysis of steady flow components. So, let me start the first important component for which we are going to calculate the isentropic efficiency and the component is turbines. So, we all know the turbine produces power. So, it is a device which is designed to produce power as a result of gas or liquid passing through a set of blades which is attached to shaft and, and the shaft is free to rotate. Now, when th with the selection of control volume enclosing a steam or gas turbines, net kinetic energy of the matter flowing across the boundary is small which can be neglected. So, I told the turbine is designed for producing the power. So, the change in the velocity is associated with the system is normally neglected because these are very small numbers as compared to other parameters. So, typically the turbine processes is represented by simplified diagram like this in which we get work C v by m dot. So, the control volume is chosen in such a way that the gas that enters the to the turbine from the state 1 expands to its full capacity and when the gas it leaves that is at state 2 it is fully expanded and whatever work is developed through this process it rotates this shaft. So, the system undergoes a change of state from 1 to 2 and this turbine process we can represent in a temperature entropy diagram. So, this is an expansion process. So, initial state your P 1 is higher and final state P 2 is lower. So, in a T H diagram we can draw two constant pressure lines. The first turn first point is P 1 and second uh, pressure line is P 2. So, the state is located at point 1 when it expands isentropically it goes to state 2 s. So, you can remember that this is an isentropic process and is a vertical line, but if there are internal irreversibility then the process actual process will land at point 2, but at a higher temperature. So, in other words we can say that gas in a non isentropic process has not expanded fully. So, there arises the term isentropic efficiency of the turbine. So, from this uh, uh, expressions we can find out uh, the actual work. So, actual work we is 
is h1 minus h2. So, in fact, this h1 minus h2 term comes from the steady flow equations and when you do the entropy balance for the control volume, we can write h2 minus s1 is greater than or equal to 0. Now, if it is greater than 0, that means there is a irreversibility is associated in the expansion process. If it is equal to 0, that means there is no irreversibility in, in this uh, process. So, from this when S, S2 uh, minus S1 is equal to 0, we get the reversible work and which is considered as the maximum work. So, H1 minus H2S. So, thereby we represent the isentropic efficiency as the ratio of H1 minus H2 divided by H1 minus H2S. So, H2S is your isentropic uh, enthalpy when the gas at, um, is at state 2. So, here let us talk something else that uh, the isentropic uh, efficiency is expressed in terms of enthalpy and when you use the steam. So, normally the expression is a general term when you talk about steam turbine, we refer the diagram what we call as a Molière diagrams. So, uh, this the, uh, the snapshot for this Molière diagram which you can represent. So, these are the constant pressure lines, we can write one is at P 1, other is at P 2. So, depending on the initial state conditions, I can represent this process, the state as 1. Now, had this process been isentropic, then I would have come to 2s. If since this process is not isentropic, I land up in H2. So, here we can directly get the values of uh, enthalpies from this Molière diagram. So, we can say for this value is H1 and this value will be H2S and this number will be H2. So, H1 minus H2 is the denominator term and H1 minus H2 is the um, uh, sorry numerator term and H1 minus H2S is the denominator term. Now, if we use the gas turbine that means the H can be represented as C p times T. For a gas equations, you can write H C p times T. Now, if you use that, so instead of a Molyer diagrams, we can directly use the temperature entropy diagrams as I have explained. Okay. Now, uh, anon another analogous term to expansion is nozzle nozzles. So, what does this mean is that? So, normally uh, the nozzles are used to generate higher velocity. So, that means schematically they are represented as that of turbine, but their main intention is initial state is defined in terms of pressure P 1 and I can say velocity or U 1 and final state is decided by pressure P 2 and velocity U 2. So, when the nozzle action is performed, your U 2 is greater than u 1 and p 2 will be less than p p 1. So, so this this nozzle action is due to expansion of fluid from its initial state to final state and this nozzle can be a steam nozzle or or it can be used for uh, analysis of air. So, that means working fluid could be a steam or air. Now, when you say it is a steam nozzle, we use again this Molyer diagrams and here we can see in a similar sense 
uh, we can okay so now before you go further we can find out this energy balance equations which is h1 plus v1 square by 2 minus h2 plus v2 square by 2 all uh, is equal to 0 that is what is uh, so in this con uh, control volume we can simply write w dot c v is equal to 0 and q dot c v is equal to 0 there is no work transfer or no heat transfer. So, using this equation we are getting this. Now, the isentropic term is defined that if the gas has not expanded to its full capacity for generating the velocity then it would be uh, um, then it will land off in having a velocity v2 square sorry in this case we can write uh, u2 square or by 2 for an actual process u2 square by 2 for the isentropic process. So, how do you find out? So, initial state we can represent this in the Mollier diagrams we can say the gas expands from this pressure P1 and to P2. So, initial from this initial state we can write if this process is isentropic then it will land up in reaching the point 2s if it is a non isentropic it will land up in point 2. So, this particular term or scale will be v 2 square by 2 and this particular term will represent v 2 square by 2 if the process is isentropic. So, based on this we define the term isentropic efficiency. So, the isentropic efficiency of the nozzle is defined as the ratio of actual specific kinetic energy of the gas leaving to the nozzle to the kinetic energy at the exit that would be achieved in an isentropic expansion. Now, I have also given another term diffuser. So, it is a just an opposite process that a nozzle does. So, similar uh, figure for a diffuser can be sorry I have given made a mistake. So, it should be the other shape. So, this is the diagram for a steam nozzle where initial area is larger than the final area. For a diffuser the final area is larger than the initial area. So, we say it is a initial state is P 1, velocity is U 1, final state is P 2, velocity is U 2. So, the other action would be so here U 2 is less than U 1 and P 2 is greater than P 1. So, this analysis also we can do through control volume and we call this as a diffuser action. Now, we will move to uh, compressors and pumps. The word compressor is used in the steady flow devices which takes work as a input that means work is done on the system and as a by virtue of it the pressure of the fluid increases. So, in it uh, and if we are using the uh, air or gas as a working fluid the term compressor is most pre mostly preferred if your working fluid is uh, water or any liquid the term is pump is fits as a most appropriate term. 
So in this in whether it is a compressor or pump the work transfer is always negative because it requires the power input. For same pressure rise the we can see that for a same pressure rise a pump requires smaller work per unit mass flowing through the compressors because specific of the volume volume of liquid is smaller compared to the vapor. So, because of this reason when you, when you deal with the steam power plant pump work is assumed to be smaller or very small as compared to turbine work. Now, when you deal with the gas turbine uh, plants the compressor work and the turbine work they are at par it cannot be neglected. So, that sense we say that turbine always drives the compressor. So, analysis is almost in a similar same as you did it for the turbines, but very basic difference that we have here the isentropic work which is the maximum work is will be less if the process is isentropic the pump will consume less work if the process is internally if it, if it if there is internal irreversibility is present then pump work will be higher. So, the when you de define the isentropic efficiency for the compressors the numerator term represents the isentropic work and the denominator term represents the actual work. Now, the last segment of this is a polytropic process. So, basically we have given a, a equation of state for a polytropic process as P b to the power n is equal to constant. Ideally, the word polytropic process is as assigned when when the system is undergoes quasi equilibrium change of states and the equation for of state can be written as p v to the power n is equal to constant and these equations can be applied for any gas, but if it is an ideal gas this p v becomes r t. So, uh, in our analysis why we are dealing with this thing is that here the n quantifies the nature of the process. So, in a P B diagram the process that can happen is you can go we can represent as P B to the power n is equal to constant process goes from 1 to 2. Uh, this nature of the process depends on what value of n. So, there are possibilities that n can be 1 which is isothermal, n is equal to gamma which is adiabatic or sometimes if it is reversible we say isentropic and for any value of n we a, a if n is any value between 1 to gamma, gamma if you put as 1.4 for air. So, it between 1 to 1.4, so it becomes a polytropic equation. So, typically, realistic number of n is about 1.3, which is normally used for reciprocating compressor. So, why I am saying this is, so reciprocating compressor is another area of application although it is, it is not a steady flow device because there are uh, it is a cyclic device. But anyway our main intention is to quantify the work transfer for two situations one is uh, in fact it is an internal reversible work which is represented as a integral of V d p. Now, when n is not equal to 1 it is represented in this form that is n minus by n minus 1 p 1 v 1 minus p 2 v 2. Now, if n is equal to 1 the equation gets 
modified as uh, intern uh, work transfer equation becomes P1 V1 ln P2 by P1. Now, here you impose the ideal gas state equations which is PV is equal to RT. So, when you use this, this takes the term of writing the equation of states what happens to the temperatures. So, you can have e e equation like T2 by T1 is equal to P2 by P1 to the power n minus 1 by n. Now, based on these things, your uh, 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 the work transfer equations further modified modifies in this form. So, basically uh, we are replacing the volume in terms of temperature, specific volume in terms of temperature. Now, we are going to discuss some of the numerical problems. So, the first problem is based on a turbine which operates at steady state and it develops 75 kilojoule of work. And this turbine is uh, for, uh, used in a maybe you can say it is a gas turbine power plant system in which air enters at 3 bar and 400 degree Kelvin and leaves at 1 bar. So, basically your working fluid is air. To start with first thing what you have to do, you have to do the schematic diagram. So, for schematic diagram we can represent the nature of a turbine process, so, the gas expands. So, the state 1, state 1 is pressure P 1 is 3 bar P uh, and T 1 is 400 Kelvin and final state your P 2 is 1 bar T 2 is not known. But what it says is we can assume this is a uh, control volume that means, if this control volume analysis if it does, uh, if you do it what it says is that work output it produces 75 kilo joule per kg. So, we can assume that this is your actual work. So, we can say W dot C V by m dot is equal to 75 kilo joule per kg and what we do not know is w dot C b by m dot for an isentropic process because the uh, turbine process is isentropic if you can assume. So, in your T h diagram the process can be written as expansion of gas from state 1 to 2 to S isentropic process in this 2. So, this uh, for this we can write it is nothing but C, uh, C p times or we can write this simply as H 1 minus H 2 S or C p times T T 1 minus T 2 S. So, what we know P 1 T 1 you know P 2 and T 2 S we do not know. So, to do that we can recall this isentropic relation. That says that T 2 S by T 1 is equal to P 2 by P 1 to the power uh, k minus 1 by k, k is your specific heat ratio that is 1.4 and also we can find no C p is 1.005 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. Okay. So, from this we know all the parameters. So, T 2 s can be computed as it is uh, T 1, T 1 is 
400 p2 by p1 is 1 by 3 to the power uh, k minus 1 that is 0 0.4 by 1.4. So, this becomes the value would be 292.5 Kelvin. So, we know T2S uh, then we can find out what is W dot C V by M dot for an isentropic process that is 1.005 T T1 is 400 minus 292.5. So, this number would be about 108 kilojoule per kg. So, we have two ratios one is W dot C B by M dot which is for actual process other is for isentropic process. Then by definition of isentropic pro efficiency for turbine W dot C B by M dot here actual work should in the it should be numerator isentropic work should be in the denominator. So, turbine efficiency becomes 75 by 108. So, this number is about 70 percent. Okay. So, this is how the you can find the efficiency isentropic efficiency for the turbine. The next problem will is talk about steam nozzles. So, normally steam nozzles operate from a is used to generate thrust. Uh, so, uh, schematically the steam nozzles shape is defined in this manner it is a basically convergent divergent nozzle and the control volume control volume can be represented in this manner. So, your initial state is 1, final state is 2. So, your main intention is V1 that is or U1 is your initial velocity which needs to be increased to U2. So, in this problem the initial velocity is given as 30 meter per second and this is not known final velocity is not known pressure condition is 10 bar temperature is 320 degree centigrade and exit pressure P2 is given as 3 bar T2 is 180 degree centigrade. So, it is a steam nozzle remember it is a steam nozzle which means which means we need to use steam table to evaluate enthalpy. So, for the initial state 1, so for the based on the condition P1 and T1 10 bar and 3 20 degree centigrade, we can find out H1 as 3093.9 kilojoule per kg and state 2 at state 2 that is based on the condition P2 and T2 3 bar and 180 degree centigrade we can say your H2 is 2823.9. Now, let us see since it is since nothing is given to us only from pressure and temperature diagram we are uh, getting this data. So, let us talk about the Mollier diagram representation where the gas from its initial states expands to the final state that means initial state and if the process is isentropic it reaches at 2s 
if the process is non isentropic it process reaches at 2 but what the data was given condition 1 and 2 and obviously they must represent the actual state now to find this uh, what happens to this uh, isentropic process if this gas or the steam would have expanded as in an isentropic manner it would have raised to h2s now on this line on the on this line uh, uh, 1 to s process your entropy remains constant so i can say s1 is equal to s2s now for this p1 and t1 i can find s2s as 7.1962 kilojoule per kg kelvin and for this value we can find h2s h2s would be 2813.3 kilojoule per kg kelvin so this number we get from the data of state 1 this number we get from the data state 2 so now we are in the situation that we can write the energy balance equation we says h1 plus u1 square by 2 is equal to h2 plus u2 square by 2 so this means u2 square by 2 is equal to h1 minus h2 plus u1 square by 2 by putting this number we can say u2 square by 2 is equal to 3093.9 minus 2823.9 plus 30 square by 2. So, this term is 270.5 kilojoule per kg. Then we need to find out u, uh, um, u2s square by 2. So, again we can rewrite this equation as h1, uh, uh, you can rewrite this equation in the manner that u2 square by 2 for an isentropic process would be h1 minus h2s plus u1 square by 2. So, your h2s is 2813.9. So, 30 93.9 minus 2813.3 plus 30 square by 2. So, u2 square by 2 for isentropic process is 281 kilojoule per kg. So, now we can find the isentropic efficiency for the nozzle that is u2 square by 2 divided by u2 square by 2 if the process is isentropic. So, by putting this number we can get the isentropic efficiency is about 96 percent. Okay. Now we will move to uh, third uh, problem which is based on a uh, reciprocating compressor and for this rep reciprocating compressors we are going to find out work and heat transfer per unit, mal, unit mass of air and this is nothing but the for an internal reversible process. So, first thing we have to draw since it is a compressors, so a PV diagram will be most appropriate. That is, we can say pressure volume diagram. The system goes from 1 to 2,
and this equation is written as p b to the power 1.3 is equal to constant. So, basically this is nothing but your area under this diagram. Okay. Pressure is this point 2 is 4 bar, initial pressure is 1 bar. So, we recall that uh, okay. So, we have P1 1 bar, T1 20 degree centigrade or 293 Kelvin, P2 is 4 bar and your polytropic index is 1.3. So, we recall uh, the uh, our attentions for, for this equations that is we require also T2 which is not known. So, you can use this equation T2 by T1 for an ideal gas that is with PV to the power 1.3 constants and PV is equal to uh, RT. The T2 by T1 we can write as P2 by P1 to the power n minus 1 by n. So, all the number is given. So, this equation will give you T2 as 293 into 4 to the power 0 0.3 by 1.3 and this number would be 403 Kelvin. So, we know T2. Then let us find out what is W dot C V by M dot. So, recall our previous equations that is minus N R by N minus 1 into T 2 minus T 1. So, all the number is given. So, it is minus 1.3 into 0 0.287 divided by 1.3 minus 1 T 2 is 403 minus T 1 is 293. So, W dot C V by M dot is equal to minus 136.8 kilojoule per kg. So, the negative side indicate negative sign indicates work input to the compressor. Now, in similar way we are need to find out the heat transfer. So, we can recall our steady flow energy balance equations Q dot C B by M dot is equal to W dot C B by M dot plus H 2 minus H 1. And here H2 since it is a air we can find out H2 minus H1 is equal to C P times T2 minus T1. Okay. So, by putting this number we can find out that this is already find 136.8 plus H2 minus 1 would be 1.005 into T2 minus T1. 403 minus 293. Again, this number is if you simplify this Q dot C B by M dot is minus 26.25 kilojoule per kg. So, this term negative means this is means heat is generated. So, and it is coming out. So, by virtue of this the air temperature is increases. So, with this I conclude this lecture for today. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.